Hi, everybody. This is Larry Christensen. I'll be doing the uh, recap here, recount of round eight of the 2017 edition of the Tata Steel Tournament coming to you from uh, Vikonzee Hall, Netherlands, and a lot of action in round eight, sensational action. And we're going to start off with a quick uh, recap re recapitulation of the game, Rapport versus Carlsen, sensational win by the young Hungarian against the reigning world champion. And Carlson may have been affected by missing that maiden three he had in round seven uh, in this tournament, and that maybe his concentration uh, was affected by that. Well, let's see. Starts out very quietly, and this is the trend these days in chess. Quiet buildups um, are preferred among the elites rather than cutting-edge theoretical battles. And here we see Carlson adopting the time-tested London system um, formation against the Reti opening, Rapport's Reti opening. Rapport's known for some of his eccentric play, but by his standards, this is uh, pretty mainstream. Um and black tip often goes for play on the queen side here. He, white tries a3. He puts a stop to that. And now the players uh, fight over control over the b4 square. Yeah, but first of all, and also Carlson takes measures against e2 e4 with bishop h7. One thing about the bishop here on h7, it's effective, but black as We'll see a bit later in the game, it does deprive black of a much-needed exit square, Luft. Okay, so here Rapport is getting in his uh, B4 um, thrust to get a little bit of play going on the queen side, but black is solid as a rock here, real solid. Okay, Carlson puts some pressure on B4, of course. And, of course, bishop takes b4 is no good on account of bishop takes f6, and suddenly uh, queen takes b4 is on the horizon. Queen takes f6, rook takes a8, rook takes a8, and white wins a piece. Trivial p uh, tactic, of course, Carlson wouldn't fall for that. He plays queen b6, putting real pressure on, against that pawn, rapport, bishop c3. And that's not really a pawn sacrifice. There's always in the background a capture of the pawn on b7. Now, Carlson makes perfectly solid decision here. Takes, queen takes, and the queen's well-placed. But now he can grab this pawn. Uh, rook b1 would be a grave error. Just simply bishop takes c3, queen takes, and blocks a solid pawn up. Can retreat the queen to c7. So he takes, and rook b1. And black now retreats the queen to a good spot. Queen d6, where it can support the center. e5. Okay, so white does have a strong rook on the seventh, but that and black has enjoys a beautiful center. Uh, the chances look to be about equal. And Rapport now stirs things up with d4. And the idea here, one idea, of course, if now if e4 white can play knight e5, stuffing that knight deep on into the front of the fifth rank, that's rather unpleasant for black. So Carlson played the much more sensible e takes d4. Answered by knight takes d4, queen takes was also possible. Similar play. Knight takes d4, and now... Uh, black plays c5, logical move. Knight b3, here's an, and d4. Also perfectly playable here was pawn takes c4. Knight takes c4, queen e6, attacking that knight. And um, then if knight b3 to d2 to protect that, that uh, knight, you can take the pawn on e2. And if white plays, let's say, knight e3 to protect the knight and the pawn, then black can go ahead and play bishop e4, attacking the rook and uh, trading off that strong bishop. Bishop takes e4. Knight takes e4, and play looks very equal here.
But instead, he played D4 a bit more ambitious. And Rapport now plays um, Bishop H3 in an interesting attempt. Not uh, not a bad move at all, of course. Great, a good, an excellent move. Keeps has to. Why well, Black has to stay on his toes here. And here's where Carlson falters. What should he do? He should look at the position and say, hey, that rook, he's uh, he's quite a force. That's White's best position to piece. Let's get rid of it. Play rook b8. And this position looks quite equal. But instead, he played the very oh, over-ambitious d3. And uh, this gets black into trouble. Why? Because now White's majority on the king side um, is quite powerful. This pawn's well blockaded. Suddenly, um, Black's having difficulties. Also, this pawn's weak. So it all comes together for White after this move. And Carlson bowls ahead forward with knight e5. And White calmly retreats with bishop g2. He wants to play h3 and f4. Start getting those pawns going. Also, the d5 square might make a nice little uh, sp attacking post for the bishop. But White's basic game here is h3 and f4, or even f4 directly. Let's see what happens. Carlson plays rook c8 to protect his weak c5 pawn. And now Rapport demonstrates his... Uh, tactical ability starts pushing the world champion around with f4 and black i think this was his best chance knight c6 was a better try than knight e to g4 after this it looks black's position and soon goes on the critical list now one idea after knight c6 might then be e4 and then black plays knight d8 e5 queen e6 that's his best bet um, the point being is, is if E takes F6, Black plays Knight takes B7, Bishop takes B7, Queen E3 check, and here Black has some counterplay, more counterplay than he does in the game. So Knight C6, uh, hard to say that would have saved the game though, but D3 was the real error in Carlson's play. So he played, Carlson played Knight E to G4. Here, come that, here comes that majority. E5, a huge threat. Carlson tries rook E8. His game is beyond salvation. Let's say uh, if queen E6, then why can it combine attack and defense with queen A7? Threatening rook E7 here. And the queen has to shed protection over F7. Black's position starts to collapse. Uh, if then rook E8 then e5 is very strong. Carlson instead played rook e8, fully intending the following p sack. Rook takes, but Rapport now demonstrates great tactical wizardry. First, he drives the queen to a very unfortunate spot. e7. With rook b6, of course, queen takes b Six, queen takes e5 is easy win for white. c5 pawn's going to drop. Carlson plays queen e7, threatening rook e1 check. But here, rook b8 check, but has absolutely forced liquidation here. Knight e8, he plays, he ignores the threat, so-called threat, and also now takes advantage of black's lack of luft. That bishop on h7, we were talking about rook e1 check forced takes knights by the way phenomenal defenders of the king he goes knight f1 no checks and now black is confronted with rook takes e8 check you have d2 of course he just takes the, the pawn and then takes the knight later so here carlson resigned after uh knight f1 beautiful game let's move on now to another great game this was by uh 
Levon Aronian against uh, Anish Giri, and this was uh, just this is right in the best tradition of Petrosian Armenian squeeze. Great game, just from A to Z. Okay, Catalan kind of a dull has a dull reputation, but these days it's uh, they they milk the most out of it. And uh, here he declines uh, the more popular D take C4. This is a solid formation. And here Aronian plays, interestingly, knight A3. Normally we get moves like queen C2. But knight A3, rather ambitious move. And uh, now black, if he takes that knight on A3, he can get, he can lose control of his dark squares. Let's see what happens. He plays knight BD7. White develops, and black... Now, if he plays b6, white can take, and uh, the knight can penetrate to c7. That looks rather uncomfortable for black, suddenly. So, Geary avoids that line, plays knight e4. And white wants to keep his precious bishop, bishop e3, and now he takes. And uh, he may, I think he regrets this decision soon. Knight d6, that's the whole idea behind this knight e4 is to force white to decide what to do with that c pawn. Knight d2 uh, blocks into knight f5, and black should be happy. So he plays c5 and drops the knight in, attacking the pawn in a3, and the bishop looks like black has solved all of his opening problems. If rook, let's say rook c3, b6. More than adequate. Aronian, though, plays rook takes c4 with little hesitation. Followed by queen c2. Not just to recoup the pawn, but also to remind black that he can create weaknesses here with knight g5 in the king position. So he's now getting his pawn back, and the squeeze begins. He's got a pawn for the exchange, and very powerful control over the dark squares, and also black has a very bad bishop on c8 just never gets unstuck so here he goes to d6 with a bishop and may, perhaps uh, a5 was an idea there for black followed by bishop a6 i think white has a tremendous game in, in any event and that simplifies matters a bit for white so here he's ready to bring that bishop back to d6, play rook b1. He's got control of the b-file, control over the board, really. Um, plays a5 to activate the bishop. But now if he goes to, let's say, bishop a6, white can just calmly retreat the queen to c2. And he's got threats to c6. Um, he's got other you know, plans, bishop d6 again factors into it. He can also start to make noises on the king side. H4, bishop, e4, moves like that. Just tightening the vice. So here, black played the very unfortunate looking rook, a7. And here we, now he starts to create little, little fractures in black's king position. Here's f6. And that weakens light squares around the king. Of course, bishop, d6. So that, it can, it's aired out a little bit. And black has almost no play, just has to sit there and take it. Another nice move, centralizing, planning, bishop c2 and queen d3 and battery action on the uh, on the b1 h7 diagonal. Black says, hey, let's, uh, well, he drives the bishop away, but now, of course, the uh, g7 bond becomes a target. Plus, now black, white can later hammer away at black's kingside structure with e4. So f5, he can't, well, classically, also bishop g6 was a, was a threat to gain, you know, that's, that was a big threat. So not too many uh, options there for black. He could have considered queen d7, bishop g6, rook, really super passive, but white has a monster grip. He can play h4, rook d1, lots of good moves there. He tries f5, bishop c2, he trade anyone? Of course not. He plays rook d1, adhering to principle. When you have space advantage this significant, you don't want to trade rooks. 
Rook d7. Now he blasts open the uh, king side. Black tries to trade queens, and I think he could have he could have traded happily and with a huge advantage. But uh, oh, he could also take on a5. That's also very strong, no doubt about it. He uh, plays queen c4, threatening e takes f5. Also excellent. Of course, this this is uh, not very pleasant for Black. So he gets his king out of harm's way, but now white transfers operations to the e-file. Beautiful play. Threatening e takes f5. Queen f7. Meeting this threat, the main threat. Now white could have also lifted the rooks, lifted a rook here. That would have the idea of rook f3. Full court press. Uh, instead he plays a queen d3. Reminding black about that long diagonal, f4, now e5, uh, g5, he's still technically in the game there, so um, he takes. But there are, you know, this was not, he had many very pleasant op options, of course, white. But he took, okay, so now. He's got two pawns for the exchange. And the next move, beautiful move, fantastic move, great by Queen, by uh, Aronian, Queen H3. F5 was also excellent. But here, um, he ties the black queen to the D rook on D7. He also starts um, pro making way for the E4 pawn. So black takes on d6 in desperation. If he takes on f4, here comes the pawn. e5 threatening e6. And if black plays, let's say, rook e6, then queen f5 does the trick. Queen takes, bishop takes is, is hopeless. Um, g5 meeting the mate threat is answered by takes. Rook takes bishop b3 with an easy win for white. Very forceful uh, game. So he's desperation. He sacks the exchange. Geary, very hard guy to beat. Check. Now he takes, but here now White activates that rook. It's been shuttling all across, all along the first rank. B1, D1, E1, back to D1. Now he comes to the seventh. Very efficient technique. A passive move. He just simply takes, and uh, that puts Black out of business. Rook takes. We have F4. Rook e8, e5, and black's history. So he tries to go uh, stay active with rook queen c5, but now he moves in for the kill. Bishop b3, re removing the guard or attacking the guard of g7. Last gasp here from Geary. Threatening mate in the event of bishop takes rook. Of course, he makes big loof here, h4. And now uh, one last gasp, of that, but that was white has too much room for the king. Check, king g4, and here in view of queen g1, check, king h5 or f5. They're both the same. Queen c5, check, bishop d5, threatening mate. Uh, black is, uh, well... Of course, dead lost. Queen f8, queen f7, and wins. Great game. Okay, now really our best game of the day, in my opinion, phenomenal game, is the following game. This is Audubon versus Andriken. Okay, this is just a real tactical wizardry all the way through. <clears throat> Let's go right to it. Starts modestly. Kind of a Vienna, a mild version of the Vienna game. And and Dreiken plays good, logical moves here against young Audubon. And White's trying to drum up kingside attack. And White, Black anticipates f4, f5, so he plays, he takes f4. Now G takes f4, Black can play f5 here, for instance, quite with... Quite a promising game. Um, so White plays bishop takes. He wants to play bishop h6, trade off dark squared bishops, see what happens. 
Black plays queen d7. By the way, that establishes the bishop here. h3 is no longer a possibility. And also, black would like to play b5, b4. Get play going over on the queen side. White plays logically to double rooks on the f file. And black regroups his forces effectively as well. And now bishop h6. And here I think, and Dreiken re really regrets his next move. Uh, he should just go b5 here and um, takes, king takes, and then b4. And a white retreats the knight to the d1, get rid of that thing. Bishop takes d1, and if queen takes d1, black can start stirring things up with queen a4. But he didn't. He re soon regrets it. He actually draws the queen out with bishop takes h6, queen takes h6. Very dangerous here, as black soon discovers. b5. Okay, that's the logical play creating move on the queen side. He might have done better. In fact, he almost certainly could have done better to consider here or later in the game, king h8. Why king h8 to play knight g8, getting rid of that queen? Okay, but b5, not the decisive mistake. But now Ottoman shows his uh, tactical skill. He plays h3. That, I think, surprised him. Andreiken. Bishop takes, if bishop takes h3, white to move and win. He plays knight f3. Where did that come from? Threatening knight g5. If, if bishop takes g2, then knight g5 forces mate. If he takes on f3, then white plays bishop takes f3, and suddenly black is confronted with a horrific threat of rook h2. The rook goes to the h-file. And uh, there is little that uh, black can do to stop that. He's, do he's done. So here, and Dreiken played reluctantly bishop e6. White continues his bi strong buildup. Rook a f1. And again, now here, king h8 was uh, certainly a move, but he plays queen d8. And now another knight, beautiful regrouping here from Audubon, knight b1, to either play c3 or bring the knight back into the attack. He sees this square in particular. And I think here in the next next move, this is a key mistake here from Andreiken. He had to play king h8 um, to play for knight g8. But he didn't. He plays d5. And now he's subjected to a withering, brilliant attack. Knight d2, getting the knight into play. If knight takes c2, white plays knight df3, hitting the knight and threatening knight g5. And if b4, black plays white. If black plays b4, white plays c3, b, c, b, c. Knight c6, and um, white has any number of very, very strong moves. Rook f6 is a, is a monster, for instance. Now if he plays king h8, too late. White wins with e takes d5. And if knight takes d5, you have a no-brainer. Knight takes g6, check cheapo. So black, black's game appears to be out of reach here. He takes... Knight takes, forcing knight f5. And here it is. He plays rook takes f5. Beautiful. Knight takes f5. Again, rook takes f5. Notice not knight takes f5. Not nearly as effective. Bishop takes f5. Rook takes f5. Black can play rook takes e4. Key move. And uh, bishop takes f4. Gf. Bishop takes check. The queen comes back to g7. It all fails. <clears throat> so this is a double exchange sack. So now if uh, bishop takes f5, we get knight takes f5, g takes f5, check, and wins the queen. Notice not knight g5, check, and back. So black plays queen d4, check, and he's... Basically, he didn't, reluctantly, no doubt, 
but that's for, sadly forced. Rook F2. So here White has two pieces for for Rook and a raging attack. Of course, Knight F6 check is threatened. If F6, White has a no-brainer piece sack here. That easy win, of course. HG, Queen takes. King H8, check, and then drives the Queen away, and then we're going to have he'll conquer F6. So he plays F5, and it's a shame here that... Uh, that Audubon did not play knight takes g6, hg, queen takes g6, check, queen g7. This is not e easy to see. You see the good wrap-up move? Yes, knight f6, check, ouch. Rook takes, queen takes, e8, check. And white is up two pawns and with a withering attack as well. Easy game, easy win. But what he did was good enough. Knight g5. And uh, the rest of the game is very cut and dry. Nice, very nice finish, actually. Beautiful endgame uh, trek here from Audubon. And Dryken tries to put up my maximum resistance, but it's futile. This pawn is too strong. Threatening a7, of course. G takes h4, a7 is he can't stop the pawn. So he tries to stop it from behind here. Now the knight gets into play to help out with the, the bishop. And also, actually, there's a major threat here. Um, black, his only hope was this. This is pretty pathetic. Then white can play to win the uh, h-pawn. h5. Knight h6, all these pawns are going to just start dropping. If king f6 there, the knight f7, and eventually that knight, everything's blockaded, and these pawns are going to fall. Um, so rook a1, yeah, g4 is an easy win. Many There are other good moves too, but... Uh, that actually now we don't. He played instead at h5, and we get a chance to see a rather spectacular finish here from Audubon. Knight c2, taking away the uh, a1 square. Check. Notice he doesn't play hg. The oops, that would be not quite as effective after f takes g4 check king e3. He can get the rook back to stop the pawn with it's also hope, hopeless but some something to play for so it gives him nothing hg goes for mate a7 it's melodramatic finish now queen and forced mate check check drives the king if king this is mate so it drives the king to g6 bishop f7 check and here black resigned in view of king f6 Bishop g8 check, king g6, queen f7, king h6, queen h7, and then mate on g7. I think I may have missed. This is also mate, isn't it? Quicker mate. Okay. All right, great. So really great. Heck of a game. Great game. So the standings are, we have the other. there are some other highlights, uh, but uh, pretty quiet for the most part in the rest of the uh, games, notably uh, the rather disappointing game between the Karyakin and so uh, that was a very quick draw anyway here are the standings top standings after eight rounds of play from Tata Steel we have Wesley So of the US leading with five and a half out of eight Pavel Elyanov and Yi Wei have, each have five out of eight from Ukraine and China respectively you have big tie at uh, plus one, four and a half out of eight. Magnus Carlson, Levon Aronian, Sergei Karyakin, and Bhaskaran Adaban of India, all four and a half out of eight. Fifty percent, we have Pintala Hare Krishna and Anish Giri. Giri had just won a game. He's, he's, he's uh, regarded as the... Most solid player now in the among the elites, and uh, he rarely loses. And he lost. Well, he certainly got lost today, didn't he? Okay, and we have uh, 
Further down the list, Rapport uh, now improved to three out of eight, and we have uh, Loke Van Vele, the Dutch multi-time Dutch champion. Uh, he's in he's in the bottom, um, and the Pomniasti is having trouble here. Two, three out of eight, along with Rapport, and then uh, Andriken and Vojtjezek are uh, each minus one, three and a half out of eight. So that'll do it for this uh, coverage of uh, round eight of a Tata Steel. Uh, tomorrow is a rest day, and, of course, play will continue up to next weekend. So uh, great action today. Just one of the a classic round of chess. This is Larry Christensen. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Mm-hmm.